Edward de Vere was born at Castle Headingham, the de Vere ancestral home, on April 12, 1550, to John de Vere and his second wife, Marjorie Golding. He had an older sister, Catherine, from his first marriage to Dorothy Neville, and a younger sister, Mary. De Vere was educated at the Queen's College and through tutoring in the house of Sir Thomas Smith, his surrogate parent. He succeeded in the earldom in 1562 after his father's death and became a royal ward of the Queen. As a royal ward, de Vere came under the guardianship of Sir William Cecil, the Queen's Secretary of State and Chief Advisor. Cecil had him learn French, Latin, penmanship, cosmography, drawing, common prayers, and dancing. An early taste for literature is evidenced in his purchases of books by Chaucer, Plutarch in French, Cicero, and Plato, probably in Latin. De Vere was briefly tutored by Lawrence Noel, an antiquarian and scholar of Anglo-Saxon language and literature. Noel departed after eight months, explaining in a letter to Cecil, I clearly see that my work for the Earl of Oxford cannot be much longer required. The letter could be interpreted as a sign of De Vere's unruliness as a student or his intelligence. In the garden of the Cecil House in July 1567, he killed an unarmed cook while practicing fencing. De Vere was not convicted for murder as a coroner's jury, which was heavily influenced by Cecil, ruled that the undercook committed suicide by running upon a point of a fence sword of the Earl of Oxford. De Vere attained his majority and took his seat in the House of Lords in Parliament on April 12, 1571. He was subsequently granted a yearly income of £666, which his father intended for him to acquire earlier, and was freed from Burghley's control in May 1572. He did not acquire his father's properties, which had been set aside to pay his debts, for another decade. In 1562, John de Vere, the 16th Earl of Oxford, arranged for his son Edward to marry one of Henry Hastings' daughters. After the death of Edward's father, the contract was dissolved. When de Vere was 21, he expressed interest in Anne Cecil, William Cecil's the first baron of Burghley's daughter. The queen gave consent to their marriage. A couple of years earlier, Anne was engaged to Philip Sidney, but Sidney's father, due to negotiations, was not in the queen's favor. As a result, Anne was married off to de Vere on December 16, 1571. De Vere left England in early February 1575 with letters of introduction to foreign monarchs from Queen Elizabeth. A month later, he was presented to the King and Queen of France. Soon after, he received news that Anne was pregnant and he sent her many expensive gifts, but a part of him considered that the child may not be his. He then traveled to Venice and remained there for about a year. In January 1576, De Vere wrote to Lord Burghley, Anne's father, about his creditor's orders. The Queen of De Vere's sister believed that he should sell more of his land to pay it off. While returning home through the English Channel in April, his ship was hijacked by pirates. The pirates took his possessions and stripped him. Once he returned home, he refused to live with his wife. De Vere allowed his wife to attend the Queen at court, but only when he was not present. De Vere had sold many of his inherited lands, including property in Cornwall, Stadfordshire, and Wiltshire, which he sold before leaving the country. By the end of 1578, he had sold at least eight of his manors. In July 1577, he asked Queen Elizabeth for Castle Rising, a medieval fortification. As soon as it was granted to him, he sold it along with two other manors and invested £3,000 into Frobisher's third expedition, an English seaman and privateer. Frobisher brought nothing back but fake gold, and de Vere lost the entire investment. The Duke of Anjou arrived in England at the end of August to negotiate his marriage to the Queen. Robert Dudley, the first Earl of Leicester, and his nephew Philip Sidney were opposed to it. This may have been the cause of the famous quarrel between de Vere and Sidney on the tennis court at Whitehall. It is said de Vere called Sidney a puppy. Sidney responded with, all the world knows puppies are gotten by dogs and children by men. The Queen personally made Sidney aware of the difference between his status and de Vere's. De Vere was soon after confined to his chamber twice for quarreling with Sidney and the Earl of Leicester. Upon de Vere's return from Italy some years back, he embraced Catholicism. 
Just as quickly, he denounced a group of Catholics, including Arundel and Henry Howard, for treasonous activities. The Privy Council ordered that Howard and Arundel to be arrested. De Vere met with Arundel secretly to attempt to convince him to support his accusations against Howard by offering him money and pardon from the Queen. He refused and immediately went to Howard. During the first weeks of their arrest, they put together a list exposing De Vere. This included atheism, lying, heresy, disobedience to the crown, treason, murder for hire, sexual perversion, and pederasty with his English and Italian servant boys, habitual drunkenness, vowing to murder various courtiers, and declaring that Elizabeth had a bad singing voice. On March 23, 1581, Sir Francis Walsingham, the Queen's secretary, advised the Earl of Huntingdon that two days earlier, Anne Vavasour, one of the Queen's maids of honor, had given birth to a son and said, The Earl of Oxford is avowed to be the father, who hath withdrawn himself with intent, as it is thought to pass the seas. De Vere, Anne, and her baby were captured and imprisoned in the tower. This affair put De Vere under house arrest and was banished from court until June 1583. In March 1582, De Vere and Sir Thomas Nivet, Anne Vavasour's uncle, fought in the streets of London. De Vere was injured and his servant was killed. Anne's brother, Thomas, sent De Vere a written challenge, which was ignored. A company of actors called Oxford's Men, also called Oxford's Players, was maintained by De Vere's father. Despite his death in 1592, they stayed active until 1602. In 1580, De Vere began patronizing adult and boy acting companies. He sponsored performances by these acting groups, a company of musicians, acrobats, tumblers, and performing animals. De Vere and his secretary created a boys' acting company, Oxford's Boys, and hired Henry Evans, a Welsh notary and theatrical aficionado, as a manager for the group. By April of 1584, De Vere's financial situation was steadily deteriorating. He had sold his inherited lands, which were his primary source of income, to avoid the possibility of compensating the purchasers if the Queen made a claim against the lands to collect on debt, the purchasers agreed to repay his debts to the Court of Wards in installments. De Vere petitioned the Queen for an annuity to help with his financial situation in 1586, and he was granted a thousand pounds. Queen Elizabeth awarded De Vere land that had been seized from Edward Jones for his role in a plot to assassinate her. In 1588, De Vere secretly sold his mansion in London to Sir William Cornwallis. At age 31, on June 5, 1588, Anne Cecil died from a fever. Her father, Lord Burghley, died ten years later. He left behind generous inheritances to De Vere's two unmarried daughters, Bridget and Susan. He did this to ensure De Vere would have no control over their inheritances. On June 24, 1604, De Vere died due to unknown causes and was buried on July 6 at the Church of St. Augustine. <laughs>